Hi, I'm Alexis Pugh. I'm thrilled to be talking to you today because that means you want to get involved in our life-saving mission as a volunteer. We really need your help and we're grateful you've chosen MAS to volunteer with. In this level one volunteer orientation video, you'll learn all about who Memphis Animal Services is, where we are, what we do, and of course, how you can help. So let's get started. First of all, who is Memphis Animal Services? Well, we're a team of roughly 80 employees, nearly a thousand foster parents, and 180 existing volunteers who work together to help as many pets and people as possible. We're guided by the following core values, compassion, integrity, love, respect, excellence, and teamwork. Memphis Animal Services, or MAS for short, is the city of Memphis's municipal animal control agency and municipal shelter for both the city of Memphis and Shelby County, excluding Germantown, Bartlett, and Collierville, which all have their own municipal shelters. But we're so much more than just that. As an open access pet resource center, we offer assistance to any pet in our jurisdiction, regardless of breed, temperament, or medical condition. Our mission is to make Memphis a safe place for people and pets, to keep pets with the families who love them, and to care for and save the lives of pets who do end up here at the shelter. Memphis Animal Services envisions a day where no citizens or pet safety is put at risk by lack of knowledge or access to resources, and every pet is cared for, safe, and loved. Our team of 80 includes the following departments, animal services officers, animal care technicians, customer care specialists, pet resource specialists, our vet clinic team, and specialists who manage programming like fostering, rescue partnerships, volunteering, and pet reunification. In 2022, we took in just over 9,100 pets into the shelter and were able to save nearly 86% of them. Through community outreach, our Pet Resource Center responded to more than 5,000 calls for assistance to keep pets with their families. Nearly 2,000 pets spent time in a foster home last year. And MAS currently has nearly 1,000 active foster families. While we are so proud of all of that progress, we're always working on ways that we can save even more pets. Your work as a volunteer is gonna be critically important to that. Transparency, also very important to us. So you can always find our shelter statistics right on our website, dating all the way back to 2008. So enough about us. Let's talk about you and how you can help. There are four major areas of our mission that our volunteers support. First, finding new homes for pets. Secondly, keeping the pets in our care happy and healthy while they're here. Third, multiplying our people power to help more pets, and lastly, keeping families and pets together. There are also three levels of volunteer that, you, that we use to differentiate who can perform which duties and who can handle animals. Simply by watching this video and completing the application linked at the end, you are already a level one volunteer. Congratulations. Level one volunteers help support our mission in a number of ways that don't involve the direct handling of animals. Level one volunteers support all areas of our mission that we discussed earlier. And we have opportunities for level one volunteers that are on site at the shelter, off site at specific locations, and even remote from your home or office. Some on-site level one activities include helping with the piles and piles of laundry we go through to make our pets comfortable while they're here, sanitizing food bowls to keep our pets healthy, sending thank you letters to donors who have supported our mission and to keep them coming back, putting together enrichment kits for our pets to improve their quality of life, and of course, there is so much more. Many of these activities have video tutorials, which you can access via a QR code which um, is located right near where the activity is completed, as well as in our volunteer office. As a level one volunteer, here are some critically important things to keep in mind. Level one volunteers do not directly handle animals. We'll talk about opportunities for advancing to that point if you choose to later in this video. Level one volunteering is open to younger ages than levels two and three. 
If you're 16 to 18 years old, you can volunteer independently at level one as long as you have a special youth volunteer waiver signed by a parent. If you're 12 to 18 years old, you can accompany your parent as long as they volunteer at other levels and as long as you also have that special youth volunteer waiver signed by a parent. We know the pets are cute, but please, if you're a level one volunteer, no fingers or hands in the kennels. For many level one tasks, we recommend using gloves, which can be found in the laundry room and in the volunteer office. Be sure to wash your hands between tasks and before or and after your shift. When you arrive for your first level one volunteer shift, you'll need to create a name badge for yourself. You can find blank name badges hanging in the volunteer office. Please always wear this name badge during your volunteer shifts. If you ever have a question or need help, just ask. Our staff running around in these blue shirts are always happy to help. You may find that level one volunteer opportunities are perfect for you and you choose to stay right here, right where you are. If you are over 18 and specifically wanna be involved in animal handling though, you're gonna to need to complete our level two handling class for either dogs or cats, or if you want, you can complete both. These are offered twice a month and require advanced registration. Level two volunteers can walk dogs, socialize pets, get photos or videos of pets, provide information to help with writing bios for pets, help with matchmaking for a potential adopter or foster, help with play group, foster field trips, the list goes on and on. And finally, our level three volunteers. These are the volunteers who actually train and mentor our other volunteers, and they utilize very specialized skills in their volunteer work. The training needed to advance to level three varies by level three volunteer role, if you are interested in a highly specialized volunteer role or in helping to train and mentor other volunteers, please let our volunteer specialist know. What are some examples of level three volunteer duties? Oh, it would be running the level two or level two dog or cat volunteer training, mentoring new volunteers on their first shifts, and managing foster field trips. Now that you've learned about the different ways you can help us save lives as a volunteer, let me show you around the place. Watch the screen for the different activities that are done in each location. As soon as you walk into our facility, this is what you're gonna see. First, our amazing adopter success station. You can help out by getting all of these documents prepped and ready for people to look at and take with them after they've adopted a pet. Here's our get involved station. Tells you about all the opportunities and ways you can help what we do. Now here's the key. If you're coming in for level two cat or dog volunteer orientation, you're gonna to wanna to come down this hallway here. This conference room is where we host those each month. Next, walk toward our bright, welcoming mural and say hi to our amazing team of customer care specialists. Always smiling here, ready to help you. So what else happens in this lobby? A lot. Over here, this is our cash booth. This is where we're gonna process all of the adoptions that you're gonna help us successfully achieve here as a volunteer. We have meet and greet rooms right here in the lobby as well as throughout the building. This is a great place for our people interested in adopting or fostering a pet to say hi and find out if it might be a good fit. And then of course, most importantly, we're heading down the hallway to the volunteer office. That'll be your home base. And that's where we're gonna introduce you to our amazing volunteer specialist, Anna Condia. Welcome to MAS. Thank you so much for choosing MAS to volunteer with. After the tour, I have just a few more things to go over with you. So let's meet back here in a few minutes. Okay, we're back in the lobby now, and this time we are on the other side of the lobby where it's an entrance to the animal housing areas. You can see right here, if I want to take a look at dogs, which we'll do in just a minute, we're going to head through that door. But first, let's head this way to our cat adoption area. As you follow me into the cat zone, we have several different types of housing opportunities for cats. Here's one that's a community cat housing opportunity. When we have some litters of kittens come in, they'll all get to live in there communally, but don't blink, because they'll be gone super fast. Cats in this room, whoo, they fly out of here. This is our main cat housing area. We have three main rooms when you walk into cats. 
cat A, which is right here. Currently, this is a court hold, so it's staff only, as you can see. And then we have cat B, which has adoptable cats right here. And you can see the signage right here that'll let you know the room name. And then right over here, we have cat C. That's our third housing area um, where we have folks in there uh, taking a look at cats right now. We also do have two more community rooms here. These are for cats that may have come in together in a group. Maybe they're a little bit shy and shut down, but they get the opportunity to have this lifestyle room experience as opposed to being in a regular kennel environment. Okay, so we just came back out of the cat area. Before we head back to dogs, I wanna duck in here real quick. This is our pet resource center. This is probably the newest uh, facet of our operation here at Memphis Animal Services. And there's a lot of great ways you can volunteer to help our pet resource center. What does a pet resource center do? Well, it helps families hopefully keep their pet. We provide all kinds of services and always ask the question, how can we help you keep your pet? Is that with pet food? Is that with medical care, behavioral training? Whatever the reason is that you need some assistance, our Pet Resource Center is always here to ask this very important question. Okay, now it's time to head into the dog area. So if you will follow me through this door, the very first thing you're gonna see when you walk into this area is our welcome to our dog adoption gallery sign. This is a great place for first time visitors here at Memphis Animal Services to start to sort of understand the process and the flow about how to meet dogs, what we do to get them scheduled with a meet and greet, what our fees are like, and oftentimes we'll have a staff member or a volunteer like you get them started by explaining how this process works. We also explain right here how you can decode a kennel card so you're familiar with how to read what's on here and know what, you're, uh, what you should be expecting if you adopt a particular pet. Again, all things a level one volunteer can do if you're interested in helping in that way. As we look over here to the right down this main hallway, you're gonna see enrichment boards. These get filled out regularly with information about uh, the pets in our care so you can always check those out. And then straight out that door right there are our play yards. You won't be using the play yards as a level one volunteer and you'll get more in-depth information about those if you attend that level two and level three volunteer orientation. So we are here in the dog kennels. Um, this is kennel room A. All of our kennels are labeled by alphabet letter that are publicly accessible. So here in dog A, we actually have two rows of kennels. You can see one row of 19 and then another row of 19 here. Most of our other kennel areas are actually single row rooms, but we're gonna walk through all of them right now so you get a sense of the layout of the facility and you feel comfortable walking through if someone asks you to run and do something. Now we're in dog B, so you can see similar layout to A, but just one row of dogs here. For your reference, and this is mostly going to be important if you're a level two volunteer in handling animals, but everyone should know about these safety stations. If you had an emergency that involved an animal while you were here on property, there are supplies in these safety stations that would help you. Things like throwing a blanket, an emergency air horn to call for help. And then of course this control pole, we would ask you not to use this, but certainly if you were in an emergency, grab that air horn, blast away, help will come very quickly if they hear that. We do again ask if you're a level one volunteer and you'd be mindful of these safety warnings in every kennel area, which asks that you do not put your fingers into a kennel. You do not open a dog's kennel. Don't take a dog out of the kennel. We do ask that you wait and ask staff for assistance with that if you are still a level one volunteer. All right, so moving on to our next zone. Again, we're still in dog B. You can see the same dogs that you saw on the other side are here. All of our dogs do have access to both sides of the kennel. Um, that's very important for us to be able to achieve humane housing for the dogs that are here with us. Sometimes you'll see more than one dog in a kennel. That usually means they came in together and are uh, familiar already, if you will. All right, we've now crossed over into D. You may say, well, what happened to C? We were in B, how are we in D? Well, actually this room right here, 
This is dog C. Um, it, it says puppy and small dog adoption. It's actually where we've been putting a lot of the dogs pre and post surgery once they've been adopted. These are smaller kennels, so we have them held in here until they're picked up by their new families. These guys are all D. So you can see, and if you're ever confused about what room you're in, because they all look the same, there are these little kennel card holders on every kennel. And you can see right there, it's gonna tell you the letter and then the kennel number, so you know which section of kennels you're in. As we go up here in D, another item that goes off of uh, room D is puppy ISO. This is for young puppies when they first come in. We do not let the public, you can see we have staff and they're working, but we don't let the public go in here and touch them because we are worried about disease and that these guys don't have all of their vaccines yet. But man, they are fun to look at through the window, aren't they? Look how cute they are. Absolutely adorable. All the information about the puppies and puppy ISO are listed on this board right outside the door here if anyone has any questions. Okay, continuing along, we do have a few smaller guys right here in the, uh, in the dog kennel area D. Now, as you would anticipate leaving D, we're gonna go straight into E. And again, they all look the same, I know that. One thing you may notice as you walk through, why are these yellow chains here? This is what we call our quiet side. So this way we direct guests onto one side and that way if a dog is nervous or shy or having a little bit of anxiety or stress, they have a side that they can retreat to away from the person looking at them. So as we turn this corner, you'll see we have some that are up here facing us and here's Quincy boy. Hi, Quincy boy. And so you can see Quincy here, if he was not sure about us, but I think he's pretty sure about us. If he was not sure, he could retreat to that other side of the kennel without having someone come get uh, up in his face and stress him out. But that's not a problem for Quincy, right? Quincy, you're good to go, aren't you? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So this is where it gets a little tricky. Now back along the, the wall here in E, we do have some, um, some more meet and greet rooms. We have some storage rooms. You'll again learn more about that in that level two dog orientation. But this is where we transition to uh, some level one jobs that we really need help with. This is our kitchen area. We have dishes constantly that need to be washed. So you pre-wash the dishes here, you load them on a rack, and then they go through this uh, automatic power dishwasher, get them all nice and clean and ready for the animals that need them. And then this side over here is our enrichment station. So this is a really great way as a level one volunteer to make a difference for the animals by prepping all the enrichment treats that they love. One of our favorites to do is right here in this freezer. We take Kongs, big Kongs like this. We stuff them with peanut butter. And as you can see here, we sure could use some more in here. So on the other side of the kitchen, you'd think we'd be done, but we're not. We have more dog housing areas. As you come through here, now we're in dog F. You can see plenty of amazing, adorable pups over here. Hi, hi friend. Um, so you're going to continue this way. Again, you can always check what room we're in by checking out the little placards on each of the kennels. We're going to turn the corner over here, moving from F into G right here. G also a common housing area, publicly accessible. And then at this point, we ask that if you are a staff member, or if you're not a staff member, if you're a volunteer, that you please stop. At the end of room G, where it says restricted area staff only beyond this point, that's because around this corner is where our bite quarantine is. And that's where we have to hold dogs for their mandated 10 day rabies quarantine if they've bitten a human. So if you're here volunteering, if you're in G kennels, please turn around and go back the other way rather than going forward because this is staff only past this point. Okay, so we're back in the main hallway now and halfway down the hallway, you're gonna come in contact with this door that says employees only. You actually are gonna need to go through this door if you're gonna help us with dishes, with laundry, with things like that. So we will give you the key code here so you're able to get back here to where all of those level one jobs get completed. 
Um, on the way back to these supplies, we're gonna stop right here at our laundry shelf. This is where, if you're helping with our massive amount of laundry that we go through, this is where you load the clean laundry after you're done washing it. We have a cart that you just roll right up the hallway and it goes right here on this shelf so that everyone throughout the shelter can access it. Very convenient location. The actual laundry is gonna happen down here farther. One thing that we think is really important is we consider you as volunteers to be part of our team. And so we want you to know your teammates who are on staff. So as you're going down the hallway, make sure to check out this Know Your Teammates board. Maybe most importantly, Milo the Overlord Cat, who's in charge of us all. As you continue down this hallway, we're going to get, and again, it gets a little confusing because things look the same in a lot of places, but you can see right here, this is that bite quarantine where we said you wouldn't want to go through as a staff or uh, unless you're I'm a staff here, so member. Office. Okay. Continuing back this way, we do have a break room here. So if you're looking for staff, they could be in that break room. And then down here, we do have some restrooms. We have a men's room and a women's room right here in the hallway. You're welcome to use those. Um, we're gonna backtrack a little tiny bit here. We passed Cat Iso. We don't have any cats in there right now, thankfully, but if you're looking for where we keep cats that are sick with maybe an upper respiratory infection or something like that, it's right here in Cat Iso, directly across the hallway from the water fountain. So easy to spot there. Okay. So we're continuing back down the hallway. There's Mallory. Hi, Mallory. Um, we're going to continue down the hallway until um, this almost dead end. The first stop we're going to make is the grooming room, pet grooming room. This is probably the most underused room in our building because we would love to see many more of our pets be able to get bathed and groomed and all of those sorts of things. Um, we just need more volunteers to help us with that. We just don't have enough capacity with staff. It's also where we store our dog beds, as you can see. In here, this is a room I spend a lot of time in. It's our laundry room. So this always needs help from volunteers. We've got this big commercial size dryer. We've got this nice big commercial size washer. But look, always laundry needing to be done never ends. So great level one volunteer task. And oh, I meant to show you. Remember when we talked about at the beginning that in each room there's QR codes giving you training about how to do different tasks? Here's the laundry one. So obviously it's going to show you that the area of service that you're helping with is our keeping our pets happy and healthy while they're here in the shelter. And you can scan this QR code and watch a video of me teaching you how to do laundry. So right now we are in our amazing vet clinic. If you are a fully trained vet assistant or vet tech and would like to volunteer in the clinic, please make sure and let us know because the team here stays so busy and I know they would love support from someone who has an experienced background in veterinary care like you. If not, let's just give you a quick glance so you know what's going on behind the scenes if you're not actually back here working. In our vet clinic, we have multiple housing areas for dogs and for cats. Um, we hold animals back here pre and post surgery. We have our whole treatment area over here where dogs are prepped for surgery, given medications, wound treatments, you name it, our clinic does it. This is actually our beautiful surgery suite. Um, we use this to get animals spayed and neutered every single day because the demand for us to get pets back out of this building uh, relies upon our ability to get them all spayed and neutered because we definitely want to send them out not able to have puppies and kittens. And then lastly, one of the coolest features of our vet clinic is our relatively new digital x-ray system. We are the uh, only agency in town that's picking up injured animals, which means we see quite a few uh, animals that come in with uh, broken bones, soft tissue injuries, things like that. And so having a fully functioning digital x-ray system makes it possible for us to diagnose and get them the care that they need. Once you get past the clinic at the corner of of the very long hallway and you turn right, you're gonna come back here and this is really into our back end function, mostly where our officers are working. We do have one area here I wanna point out to you. This is our community cat room. 
So these are cats that are really not comfortable with human contact, not socialized. And so our plan is to get them fixed through the effort of TNR, trap, neuter, release, and put them back out in the community. This is a national best practice, and it is how we have avoided euthanizing a healthy cat since uh, 2016, I believe, maybe 2017. But it has been a long time since we've had to do that because we return these cats to the community. Right here, this door takes you to the Sally Port. This is where our officers come in every single day, all day, bringing in animals. So you can see there's four parking spots, room for four animal control vans. These are the vans that our officers drive around the community. Um, you can see they have kennels on the side, they have kennels in the back and kennels on the other side. And so these kennels um, give us the ability to take in about 10 animals on a van, depending on the size, if that includes some smaller animals. Um, if you're driving down the street and you're looking for an animal control van, this is what they look like. Also, you may, ever, you may be asked sometimes if you're somebody who has got some physical strength, you like doing physical labor projects. We do have some storage areas out here, some cleanup projects we sometimes ask people to help us with. So if someone says, can you help us in the Sally Port, this is the room that you're gonna come to. Okay, again, as soon as you come in from the Sally Port, this is the area where officers perform intake on dogs. Through this hallway here that says corridor, there's a few more restrooms and there's an uh, animal control office there. This first door on the right, that's actually where our officers sit at computers and enter memos and information about the animals that they bring in. So they do have a, a group office that they use there. But this is where they actually perform the intake on the animals. So every animal that comes in is gonna get scanned for a microchip. Um, they actually get scanned multiple times throughout their stay here to make sure we didn't miss a chip. They get weighed on this scale and then they'll get placed along this wall. Usually their leash will be hooked here so we can get a photograph, um, get a rough height of them. Our officers use squeaky toys like this to get the dogs to give the best photos possible. And then they also, while they're here, they vaccinate them. It's really important that animals coming into a shelter environment get vaccinated at what we call time zero. So those basic core wellness vaccines, they're gonna get as soon as they walk in the door into our facility. And then those animals are gonna go over here to our ACO intake area. And that is where the daily struggle for space begins. <laughs> So every single day, our officers fill these kennels and more. Every single day, we have to be able to get every dog in this room, plus every new dog that comes in that fills up overflow kennels, kennels in our back area, these small kennels here. We have to find a place to move all of these dogs into all those other A through G rooms that we just showed you. Problem is, if a dog didn't leave its kennel in A through G, there's nowhere to move these guys to. And that is a reality and a struggle we face every single day. We need to have the same number or more animals leaving the facility to make room for the new ones coming in. And that's why we've put such a strong emphasis on trying to manage our intake on the front end asking people who find a pet if they'd be willing to foster it before it ever even comes here if we support them with medical care food supplies and resources and adoption placement help too we can do all the same things for a pet that's in a home in the community that we can for a pet that's here in the shelter and it frees up space for pets that need to be here and more importantly that pet gets a wonderful experience being in your home instead of in a kennel at the shelter so as you can see, it's a big operation. There's a lot of work to be done and a lot of animals that need your help. We rely every day on our amazing team of fosters, our amazing rescue partners, our wonderful community of adopters, and of course, our amazing volunteers. So thank you for being a part of this and thank you for signing up to be a volunteer at Memphis Animal Services. I'm gonna turn it over to our amazing volunteer specialist, Anna. now. She'll take it from here. Now that you've completed the video, here are the next steps. Click the link on our website to fill out our volunteer application. Enter the code MEMPETS23 when it asks you for a code. If the code is incorrect, your application won't be approved. 
Next, be on the lookout for two emails. The first email you receive will be from Better Impact, confirming that we have received your application. The second, if you have entered the code correctly, will be an email saying your application has been approved. Please keep in mind that it may take up to 72 hours for approval. Third, come to the shelter for your first shift. Once you've received the email saying your application has been approved, you can come into the shelter at any time from 12 to 4. Your first time here, you'll come to the volunteer office to make your name badge and then go to the cash booth window to purchase your volunteer t-shirt for $5. Credit or debit card is preferred and checks aren't accepted. Next, volunteer with us whenever you can. You're welcome anytime during our public hours, but if you would like to come before we open to the public, please send us an email to let us know you're coming. We're located at 2350 Appling City Cove. To get to us, just take the Appling exit north off I-40, turn left on Appling Farms Parkway, and follow our signs. Keep in mind the dress code is casual, but open-toed shoes or slides are not allowed for safety reasons. Keeping your feet and legs covered can help protect you from injury. Always wear your volunteer shirt and name tag when you volunteer. Or, if you're looking to volunteer from home, we have plenty of ways you can help out remotely. Next, be sure to join our Facebook group for updates. Look for Memphis Animal Services volunteers in Facebook groups and request to join. If you have any questions, you can email me at anna.candia at memphistn.gov or come find me in the volunteer office Tuesdays through Saturdays.